at Irvin Environmental Education Center. We bring in children, school groups with a special focus on urban youth, um, have on display numerous ecological tools and technologies designed to teach primarily, not exclusively, but primarily urban residents how to have more local access and control over essential resources like food, water, waste management, energy production. This is a solar greenhouse. It's um, also known as a bio shelter. Basically what it is is a greenhouse that is facing towards the south that's designed to utilize the sun's energy, passive solar energy, primarily for heating and to store that heat in the thermal mass contained inside the building in the form of earth and water. As opposed to a conventional greenhouse, which uh, typically contains no insulation and um, relies uh, almost entirely on um, supplemental heat sources to keep it above freezing. So inside of this greenhouse, we have a variety of systems, including garden beds. Uh, we um, raise rabbits inside the greenhouse, which we sell um, as meat rabbits. Their bodies give off um, a small amount of heat, but uh, collectively it adds up. And plus the bed of manure that they're forming is decomposing and producing a fair amount of heat as well. Um, which can help to take the edge off the cold inside of an enclosed environment. They're also providing carbon dioxide, which um, inside of an enclosed greenhouse environment can be a limiting factor to plant growth. We have a recirculating aquaponics system. We're raising plants and fish together in an integrated uh, cyclical ecosystem. Um, basically what's going on there is we have fish living in the large tank. The water flows through uh, what's essentially a stream bed where microorganisms living on the surface area of gravel and on the roots of plants convert the ammonia uh, produced by the fish into something called nitrate, which is a form of nitrogen that's highly usable by plants that are growing in the system. So we uh, harvest watercress that grows in the system, and by the time the water is passed through the whole thing, it returns to the fish having been purified. So it's a great way to also demonstrate what a cyclical ecosystem is and how that can function, which is um, what we want to use uh, as a model for, for cities as a whole and how they can function more like closed loop ecosystems as well. One, one of the problems with cities right now is that they function very much like linear ecosystems. We are, they sort of act like resource vacuums, drawing in natural resources and raw materials from the land base all around and, and now with a globalized economy from the entire planet. People are unaware of where these essential resources are coming from. There's a visual barrier that separates them from the point of origin of these materials. That's led to the illusion that through technological process that people have somehow grown to become independent of natural processes. While the truth is that our survival is just as dependent upon natural processes as they ever were before. We want to make cities function more like cyclical ecosystems, where we're trying to produce as much food as we can within the boundaries of the city. We're not saying we need to be growing 100% of the food. I don't know if that's realistic or necessary, but 20% is, is a very doable number that's being met in cities throughout the world today. One way to do that is by creating little pockets, little ecological pockets within the urban mosaic where you have food production, you have uh, you know, water collection, and you have energy production and waste management happening, uh, for people to come and, and have some basic connection to that. This is especially important with kids, many of whom who don't have a relationship with these, with these things whatsoever, and many of whom are, they're, well, they're terrified of dirt, they're terrified of touching dirt. So it's really important just for, you know, for bringing kids in and really do things as basic as that where they can pick up a chicken, they can look at fish, they can taste vegetables, they can learn about mushrooms and how mushrooms grow and things as basic as that, uh, developing what we call ecological literacy. If we really want to see these changes that we talk about in the transition of the permaculture movement go exponential, then that means being active in in dominant culture, in, in society, in the world, which is, is really happening in, in urban environments. Um, and that if we can make changes there, that I, I think we'll see them spread quite rapidly. I got an undergraduate degree in humanities and you know had been involved in all sorts of activist movements for many years and knew what was wrong with everything in the world and I could tell you what was wrong with every single social system and thoroughly critique it. 
but I didn't have too many ideas about what it was I was in favor of. And, uh, and it was at that time that I also was introduced to permaculture, which, yeah, seemed like this whole s complementary set of solutions to my critique of society. And for every, for every no, I wanted there to be a yes. I think it adds a lot of validity to any critique you have of anything. If you can point to something that you are in fact in favor of and say, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not happy about this, there's things about this I don't like, but here's something I'm presenting as an alternative, rather than just saying this sucks and, and not backing it up with anything else. Not just change your light bulb, but what can you do in your backyard today for no money? Very little money. You know, what can you get started on right now? Because I think that's, that's very empowering for people to be like, to grow a vegetable in a pot and say, I did this. And even if in the big picture it's fairly negligible, whatever, it gave them a sense of, of pride and confidence and made them feel like they could do something. And then if you get enough people doing that, and then if they start connecting with each other and communicating with each other, it's like, the, the, then it just, it, the, the potential is enormous.